vividly aware through some particular sense keep in the awareness this is the first sloka first sutra the second at the start of sneezing during fright in anxiety above the chance flying in battle in extreme curiosity at the beginning of the hunger at the end of the hunger i may add one more word when cop stops you <laughs> be uninterruptedly aware because mahadeva is talking about the situations which was there in his time we can add one or two more <laughs> which really takes you away shakes you please be be uninterruptedly aware during all these moments and realize the truth let me now come up and bring the science behind this sutra the rationality behind this sutra see the sneezing or hunger or escaping from a fear from the place means your body is filled with adrenaline all these movements are involuntary not under your logic or control it means your whole being is involved whatever you know as you everything is involved everything is involved understand in those moments if you can be aware suddenly the unclutching will happen there are only two traditions in the whole world the whole spirituality can be classified as two tradition the traditions which say which gradually leads you to enlightenment and the traditions which gives you the straight experience of enlightenment the sudden experience the tantra the shaivite system the teachings of shiva the more techniques he gives for sudden enlightenment that is why he is so practical that is why his book has not become popular anything which is practical will never become popular please understand because practical means you need to do something practical means you need to you need to be doing straight away things which you can't afford to understand everybody wants to talk about weather because they don't need to do anything everybody wants to talk about weather why they can't do anything and they don't need to do anything but ta start talking about things in which they can contribute some way they can do some way they can alter then nobody wants to listen then nobody wants to talk the difficulty is the practical things are not marketable here mahadeva is giving a very powerful practical technique every day you are going to face hunger hope because many people make eating as a routine they don't wait for hunger to happen in the system one more important thing we should know hunger does not happen from navel center hunger happens from throat throat center we never allow or we never create have that awareness even to see from where that hunger starts originating we are made to believe it starts from the navel and the moment you see little uneasiness you start thinking only from navel it comes no the first subtle signal starts from throat center vishuddhi that is the place where the feeling starts the moment energy goes down see if the first layer energy is coming down to the reserve level this is the place like a fuel meter if you want to open the second level energy also only you have to work on vishuddhi if the first level energy is coming down to the reserve level also the signal will be given here only 
but we are not that sensitive to see the signal. Maybe you can try, try fasting for one day. Surely we won't die fasting one day. <laughs> if we are really healthy. <laughs> and of course, better let me put a disclaimer here itself. Consult your doctor. <laughs> now I have to have a disclaimer. Ask your doctor his enlightenment is right for you. <laughs> Before you start <laughs> practicing. <laughs> Anyhow. If you fast one day, usually I always tell, at least all our swamis, there are many ads that uh, medicines, the doctors prescribe for their family, means which they themselves trust. This is the technique I myself trust. That is why I prescribe my, for my family. All our swamis, I tell them, to practice this technique once uh, 15 days. Once in 15 days I ask them, do not eat from sunrise to sunset on Pradosham day, one day before the full moon or new moon. I tell them, do not eat. There are so many other reasons for it. Because that is the day, very easily the cleansing will happen. Physical and the engram level, both. You can try the next Pradosham, one day before the full moon or new moon day. Now we will be having the full moon day Pradosham. Just now new moon was over. So full moon day Pradosham we will be having. One day before, it may be 23rd I think. Try, do not eat and do not drink also. I have seen people drinking 3 liter milk and 10 banana saying today is fasting. <laughs> <laughs> no, Swamiji, today I am fasting. Means what? Three liter milk nicely boiled and reduced to half a liter. And just ten bananas. And sometime a little, some other snacks. If you go somewhere outside here and there. Anyhow. <laughs> Not that fasting. No eating and no drinking. You may take little water. That's all. Just sit whole day with awareness where the hunger starts. Where the hunger starts. See throughout the hunger raising in your system, then you will have irritation and all kinds of low mood thoughts. What nonsense I am doing, I am feeling hungry and I am, you are not giving food. All this conflict, that is the initial thing will happen. Then slowly it will turn, the number of thoughts will come down. And slowly you will see the intensity, the power of thoughts over you will come down. And I tell you, 12 hours is a too long time. At least one glimpse of silence you will experience. I can say, one Satori guarantee in 12 hours. All you need, that is why, actually we do this practice in India also with Panchatapas. Panchatapas is the same thing. 12 hours they cannot eat and they sit center of the, the fire circle and so that they can't go out and they will be monitored. <laughs> and constantly they will be aware of what is happening inside the system. See, if you are really sincere, try some of these techniques once in a while, you will see so many new things will open in you. So many new understandings will open in you. So many new understandings will happen in you. Just 12 hours. Once the sun sets, you can eat. Till sunrise to sunset, just sit. Do not be watching TV. Then your whole awareness will be in the TV, not in the what is happening inside your system. Not only you should be hungry, you should not be entertaining yourself in some other engagement, some other distraction. You should be aware completely whatever is happening inside your system. Hunger, 
or sneezing. One more thing. Sneezing, you can't even expect when it will come. Human beings are, see, so powerless. You can neither will a sneeze nor you can stop a sneeze. You can't will and you can't stop. Try your best. Many people doesn't want people to be, see the face, the different movements the face is taking. <laughs> they call it Ashtavakra. All the eight <laughs> turnings the face is taking. And they will try their best to cover or whatever. Whatever you may be, you may be doing. But you can't stop. When next time you are about to sneeze, don't get ready to say God bless you. Be prepared. You will see God blesses you. That moment can be used. Be aware. Just close your eyes. Be aware. And see how it is raising. How your whole body is getting prepared. Understand? In a strong sneeze, one moment, your mind stops. That is why using snuff has become an addiction habit. Why well, you know, when you use the snuff powder, you will sneeze. That gives you a sort of a release, relief. It gives you a glimpse of that settlement. And no mind state. One moment. That is why using snuff powder is deeper addictive habit than smoking. This is worst habit than smoking. Because it gives you a big relief. You are again and again inspired to have that taste. Have that taste. Don't use snuff powder. Whenever next time you are about to sneeze, just witness. Just create a distance. Close your eyes. And just see how it gets created. It's rolling in your system. And coming to the peak, your whole being is now squeezed. And tuck. The release happens. The whole pressure building and that big relief in that gap, you will see a deep sense of relaxation. If it is consciously experienced, just by remembering the sneezing, you will be able to get back to that silence. Understand? Sneezing will become like a key. When you have had that one moment silence, with awareness during the sneezing, or the adrenaline release, here he says, Mahadeva says beautifully, during the fright, in anxiety, above a chasm, flying in battle. Flying in battle means what? When you get a voice from the kitchen, Honey! <laughs> and <laughs> just be aware. <laughs> in the initial level, it will be honey. Then, Sunye! In Hindi, Sunya means listen. <laughs> Anyhow, flying in battle, when the adrenaline release happens, when Swadhisthana is awakened, when Swadhisthana is shaken, in extreme curiosity, that so many times will happen in our life. Extreme curiosity means you are waiting for some important person to come. You have never seen him, but you heard so much about him. You have heard so much, but you have never seen him. He is coming to your place. You will be so curious how he will be, how he will walk, how graceful he will be, or how his actions are going to be. That extreme curiosity, even at that moment, you can be aware and the moment he comes inside, you will see you are thrown back to your center. And you are relaxed. That is why so many people feel a high reduction in their thought per second, TPS, when they have the first darshan of the master. The first glimpse of the master, first darshan, 
suddenly puts you to the silence, puts you back to your center and a strong ecstasy because even those moments, if you are aware, you can go back. When you especially have a darshan of master, you don't have to be aware. His awareness itself will create awareness in you. His awareness creates fire in you. That's why you are thrown back to your center. At the beginning of the hunger, at the end of the hunger, one more thing, strongly the hunger will be awakened and spread inside your body within a muhurta and it will settle down. Muhurta means one and a half hour. One and a half hour is the maximum time it will take for your hunger to begin and end. Please understand, even if you don't give food or water, within one and a half hour, your system will automatically create awareness and settle down. It will not send you the signals of irritation, worry, low mood, which is the side effects of anger. You will not have those symptoms. Within one muhurta, the anger will settle down. Your system will relax. Please understand. When you are going to do the fast, hope you will be doing. <laughs> if you are going to be doing next Pradosham day, sit when the anger begins. Within one and a half, the next, the moment you feel the anger has started, please don't move at least for next one and a half hours. You can sit in a very comfortable way in a chair or in a very comfortable way. Do not distract yourself. Do not lie down. Just sit. Witness where it is starting. Where is the space or which chakra in your body it is starting. It is gaining its momentum. It is sending you the message. Actually, you can diagnose your bio memory by fasting. First signals which comes to you is the first layer of bio memory you have. Whether it is irritation or just something like a inability to do something, inferior feeling or that feeling or then the anger towards yourself or the next feeling slowly the courage to face let me face what is there then the next feeling will be the silence you can diagnose the layer and layer of your bio memory when you are fasting because during fasting your whole being will be available to you during digestion your whole being will not be available to you because half of the your energy is already engaged in digesting the food which you have eaten so even while you call, while you mobilize all the people who are living with you, all the family members, half the crowd will not be there because they are busy with the other work. But when you are fasting, all the fellows will be at your disposal. They will all be sitting in front of you and listening to you, waiting for your words with the awareness. Just witness that one and a half hours, see how the anger is gaining the momentum, going to the peak and slowly falling into the silence. Same way, whenever the adrenaline release happens or when you are curious extremely for some experience or during the sneezing, all these moments be uninterruptedly aware. Today, Mahadeva is giving two different techniques, but the same message. The first technique is be aware of your conscious movements, like seeing, touching. If you are touching somebody, just see how many square centimeter area of your body is touching that person. Be aware, alive only is those few square centimeters. All other parts of the body, forget about it. 
just forget be alive only in that part that few square centimeters suddenly you will see that part has become alive intensely any part of your body if it becomes intensely alive just by your awareness that will lead to higher consciousness if it becomes alive by external experience it will lead you to dullness that is why the 10th sweet will not be so tasty because the sweet comes by external object the life the tongue comes to life by the external object touching it if the same tongue comes to life by the awareness you will see it leads to higher consciousness so first step is being aware in conscious actions second step is being aware in involuntary actions these are the two powerful methods mahadeva is giving for sudden enlightenment means catching the glimpse suddenly catching the thread catching the truth catching the core suddenly so of course you will be able to practice this technique only when sneezing happens <laughs> only when anxiety happens only when extreme curiosity happens sneezing during fright in anxiety above a chasm flying in battle in extreme curiosity at the beginning of the hunger at the end of the hunger these are the situations use use be aware and catch the truth the glimpse and experience let you all experience achieve and radiate the eternal bliss nityananda thank you